In this video, I'm gonna be learning Mike Shake's top three hardest skills. Well, the ones that I find the hardest. But first, who is Mike Shake? Mike Shake is this good looking. Wait a second. This good looking. Hang on, what? Ah, there he is. This good looking, skill learning YouTube god who has blown up over the past year and hit 1 million subscribers. Congrats, by the way, by learning new skills every single week. From pen tricks to pole spins and lock picks yes. to front flips. He proves that with passion, efforts, and practice, you can literally achieve whatever you want. And I love showcasing people that have really big goals, but show all of the small steps that they take to achieve those big goals. And there is no one better at doing this than Mike. Also, please do that. So the skills we're gonna learn is slacklining, the card spring, and handstand walking. So the first step is to set up the slackline. This is not working. Aha, just figured it out. Whoa. The hardest part of this skill at the beginning was just being able to get up on two feet. <laughs> this is gonna be really hard. Every time I got up, the rope would shake uncontrollably. And this was because my center of mass was not inside the area of support, which was directly underneath me. This is so much scarier than it looks. Mike Shake makes it look unbelievably easy. But over time, and with a lot of crazy arm swings, I started to get the hang of it. Whoa, okay, that's progress. But we're still far from being confident. The repetitions did help though, as I was able to continually analyze my body and feet positioning for optimal balance. You see this sweat? That is dedication. Nah, jokes, it's just like 40 degrees outside and I don't have sunscreen or water. But solid progress was made. Ah, one hour. Day two was more of a struggle as it was super windy and I could barely get past the first two meters. After around 30 minutes of practice and landing badly on my foot, I decided to stop for the day. Then on day three, I realized my balance was muscle memory and started going further along the line. And over two hours and with many close yet so far attempts, I became super, super focused. I am absolutely Gonna call that. Yes! Woo! And just for safekeeping, I did it again. So if you watch my video where I learned 24 skills in 24 hours purely from TikTok, which you can see right here, you would have seen me fail over and over and over again at trying to do the card spring. But I ain't no quitter. So what I was doing originally was holding the cards backwards like this, but what you need to be doing instead is having your middle finger and your thumb in the corners of the deck, bend it downwards, and then release through your thumb like that. For two hours, I flicked cards and picked them up. Flick cards again and pick them up again. Mike was correct in saying, the hardest part of this process is by far picking up the cards off the ground. But this skill wasn't gonna learn itself, so I persisted, watched the footage back and realized that I was trying to do the spring way too quickly, primarily because my cards were shooting out of my hand way too fast. So day two, I only practiced the card push and focused on the finesse of my thumb movement. And well, at the end, it was still pretty messy. So I repeated the process over days three, four, and five. And by the end, I had a pretty solid card push. So on day six, after a bit of practice, I went for it. Okay, it's nowhere near as good as what Mike can do, but I'm losing my absolute mind and I've still got another skill to learn. So I'll see you in the next one. Before starting this skill, it is super important to warm up your wrists, arms, shoulders, and back, as it can be very injury inducing. Now the goal for this challenge, as per Mike's video, was 10 meters. <laughs> and boy, did it seem like a long way. Oh shit. Falling is very much part of learning the skill. So step one was to learn how to fall properly to avoid this. 
And the way you do this is by rotating your body and falling to the side, which should come pretty intuitively. Next is understanding balance and momentum. The straighter your legs are above your body, the less chance of forward momentum. However, if your legs move too far forward, you have more chance of doing this. So finding the position that is optimal for you comes with, you guessed it, practice. What also helps is activating your core and having your hands rotated slightly outwards, giving your body and shoulders more stability. But after 40 minutes, my wrists were getting very sore, so I stopped for the day. In day two, after another warm up, I started on the 10 meter course, but my wrists were still quite sore from the previous day. So I'm gonna put these wrist wraps on just to alleviate some of the tension on my wrists. It's starting to hurt. Let's do this. And after about a full hour of practice, everything was hurting. My arms were shaking, my eyes were exploding, and each failed attempt made me more fatigued, but also more determined. And with my focus dialed in and every muscle fiber working, I got it done. Absolutely. Taking that. Yes. Oh, 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 oh. Ladies and gentlemen, that is it for the video. Now tell me, Mike, how did I actually do? Comment below, everyone. Would love to hear what you think. Don't forget, any goal that you want to achieve, all you got to do is practice and keep taking two steps forward. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.